Do return in one piece, Captain.
Multiple fractures, lacerations, and untreated burns detected. Signs indicative of sudden, violent crash landing. Yep, that's me. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was, readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Why does that sound familiar? Ah, uh -uh, it's Ellie. Excellent timing. Hello, Ellie. What a pleasure it is to see your sparkling beauty in this barren waste. It's Dr. Fenhill. I certainly know his ex-crew. Mostly from the operating table. I've probably seen more of them than he has. How cruel you are. I distinctly remember a special party at the Lost Hope Bar on Groundbreaker where we... We did not. Oh, fine. But we almost... Keep going, and you're gonna see how good this automech is at picking up teeth. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. Meds, I'm guessing. Pirates love bits, and unlabeled meds are worth a bundle. The one and only. Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these automechs are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Yes, well, I shan't. Give Wanda my chilliest regards. And farewell to you, dear Dr. Fenhill. I trust I'll see you next I find myself on the Groundbreaker. You'd better hope not.
The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. We'll talk later. Got a bit of a sore throat from all that cake coffee. Well, well, Dr. Fenhill. It's not often I see you on this side of sick bay. I make it a point not to get shot, and when I do, I can usually take care of the mess myself. It'd be nice to have you in here, patching people up, not just blowing them apart. I respect what you're doing here, but you know I'm not ready to settle down. It's not you, it's me. Have it your way, then. You always do. Now, about your friend here. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. So then I told him, oh, ha ha ha, that tickles, how odd. No.
Don't desist. We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix the thing his own self, and busted it even worse, and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptid on Acid. Laws, no! Sometimes it's canid teeth. Or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. Oh, I don't need any of it. It's also I can talk to Sebastian. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts? Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptodon acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. He smited her. Smote? Smoot? Don't get me wrong. 
I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow. Thanks again for setting me up with Sebastian. Is there anything else I can help you with? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. laws. Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Well, if you're that friendly about it, then you definitely aren't one of Catherine's sublight toughs. My mistake. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess.
I can't keep working double shifts either. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer too. Damn right it is. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. No, I paid Sublight for it, so it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Sure, and once you finish helping me, then we can talk about the poster. Sorry, just spooked me, was all. Not much I can do for this guy. You startled me. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Dilated pupils, anxious posture, muscle spasms. She's high on some quality stuff. No! Okay, maybe just a little... 
Braxton always has a good stash, and I just like to let loose a little. Stop thinking about the marauders and the raptodons outside, you know? Oh, damn. He told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick, and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? Poor fella. Hope he's okay. We should hurry, Captain. like those old Sundays when we'd unload salt tuna shipments at the camp. Am I the only one getting hungry? Think they left anything good behind? I wonder who used to live here. Do you suppose anyone remembers anymore?
I can take a hint. Visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in! Come in! In my experience, any stranger this friendly either wants to rob an airlock you or sell you something. Nonsense! Out here in the wilderness, we welcome all who come to our door. Now come in! Make yourselves comfortable! I'm afraid we don't get many visitors out here. The Raptodons and Marauders scare off all but the boldest. And if you've braved them, you must be exhausted. Why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure I would remember something like that. Now, quit fretting yourself about that. Make yourself at home. Dinner's almost ready. Are we gonna get in trouble today? Not that I want to, it just seems to happen around you, is all. Something on your mind? Oh, hello there. You come for, for a uh, dinner? Sorry, I'm not real good with, uh, names. Now, there's no call for being rude, Captain. Maybe he's just having a hard day. You don't know. You got a funny way of putting things. I used to be good with words. But it feels like there's this fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh? What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? The Eternal does not desire that we huddle and hide, crowded in by walls. We all share the spark of the Divine, and we were made to spread it across the stars. Out here, we are free. And even apart from society, the universe provides for us, as your being here proves. Just that your presence here is a gift to us, and one that we don't take for granted. Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Oh, hi there. Did you come to bring us more of those rocket candies? 
It's wonderful. There was this other man who used to bring them. Not anymore, though. I don't know. I'm not really supposed to talk to strangers. Mama and Papa said he came from the city. When we got sick one time, he brought those candies to make us well again. And they worked. Now we feel better than ever. Mama says they're a gift from the Eternal. He said they were making us sick. Mom and Papa got real mad at him for that. Some kind of off-brand drug, maybe? Wouldn't be the first or the worst. They went to have a talk with him. Afterwards, they said he wasn't coming back again. Oh, think they'll notice if we slip out first? I've seen and made my share of corpses, but this is downright unsettling. I'm gonna be sick. But what's this? You're tracking blood into the kitchen. Oh dear. You've been nosy, haven't you? Of course not. What better end for the day than a meal around the family table? And what more noble purpose for you than to bring us together? Nonsense. What the Eternal provides, we shall gladly accept. And there you have it. Can't argue with that, can I? Make him regret it! No! <laughs> 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 